There are a few more things I'd like to say about optimization and power laws. First, I want to underscore again how different these two sets of ideas are. On the one hand, the idea that power laws are the result of optimization, some sort of uh, cost minimization process. And the other, that power laws arise from some probabilistic process that isn't trying to optimize anything. It's just a bunch of more or less independent random events that somehow accumulate to produce this power law pattern. So they're very different points of view. One looks at some sort of optimality and function, and the other just says it was a result of some random or stochastic process. And I think this is uh, typical or illustrative of um, different ways of, of viewing phenomena in science more generally. When we see a certain phenomena, do we tend to think, oh, that must have been some weird random chance thing that led to it? Or do we think, oh, there must have been some purpose or optimality or function associated with this? Obviously, there isn't a one-size-fits-all answer. Different phenomena will be described by different ways. And also, the notion of optimality plays itself out differently in different fields. But again, going back to power laws, what this means is, is that if we observe a power law, we can't then conclude, oh, that must be the result of an optimization process, because we know that non-optimization processes can very easily give rise to power laws. By, um, by the same token, we also, if we see a power law, we can't immediately assume that it was not um, an optimization process, because we know that optimization processes can give rise to power laws. So the bottom line is, as I've been trying to say throughout this unit, there are multiple um, ways to generate power laws, multiple plausible ways to generate power laws, um, and that the some of the different mechanisms for generating power laws are very different in character. Optimization principles on the one hand and various stochastic or random processes on the other. The other observation about optimization that I want to make is that optimization can occur in rather different contexts. And one way to distinguish or maybe categorize these different contexts is to think about who or what is doing the optimizing. In the highly optimized tolerance point of view, um, there we're thinking about an engineered system. People or a group of people have designed a network or some other complex system to perform a particular function. In this case, we want it to be tolerant or robust, resilient to random failures in nodes. So that is an optimization process done intelligently with agency by people or whomever designing the system. We can also think about optimization in evolutionary contexts. So evolution by natural selection arguably works to optimize or at least improve um, survivability of um, individuals. And in so doing, various traits um, are, are selected for. Um, they may not be exactly optimized, but there's this push sort of to always be better. So in a biological uh, system, we might have optimization principles at play. And there we're thinking about the process of natural selection as doing the optimizing. We could also imagine optimization in physical systems. And there it's not natural selection, but um, the physical world can be described by Newton's laws of forces, pushes and pulls and so on but also by various minim uh, minimization principles, optimization principles. Um, so a system tends to seek the state of lowest energy. It's trying to minimize its energy. Or in thermodynamics and statistical mechanics, a system is going to try to minimize its free energy, which is a balance between wanting to maximize its entropy and minimize its energy. So um, people often think of um, try to explain the patterns in river networks by recognizing or thinking that uh, the system is going to tend to be one that's going to minimize energy. So this idea of optimality, I presented it maybe in a, at least with a um, tolerance example and the network example 
as being something that you would arrive at from an engineering point of view, intentional actions by people, um, optimization can arise in many other settings as well. And lastly, I should mention that these three sort of pictures I have of minimizing energy, evolution by natural selection, and engineered or designed systems, of course, they're not um, mutually exclusive. Um, we're all subject to the laws of energy, I suppose. And of course, in social systems, one could imagine um, that they're often a mix of some sort of evolutionary or Darwinian process along with design and intentionality, both by individuals and by larger systems. In any event, optimization um, can function in complex systems to produce power law, power law-like behavior, uh, but it's not the only way that um, power laws can occur. There are many mechanisms for producing power laws.